So in this video, I wanted to talk about the different processes which actually end up causing the condensate to become thicker. So I'm really talking about the organs or the, those big folds that happen in the continents, which explain why they are both higher and lower than the oceanic crust is. Mm -hmm. So the lithosphere under the continents is usually much thicker. And we now understood that because the material that the lithosphere is made of on the continents is like less dense, we understand that it's going to take up more space and it's also going to float higher up on the mantle because of isostatic adjustments. And because of those same isostatic adjustments, you're going to have subsidence on happening every time you have an uplift, increasing the density on the middle. So we already talked about that in the first video, but let's talk about some of the reasons about, about because of which these things actually happen. Now, one of the obvious reasons we already talked about is the idea of compression. And you see that happening on both a continent versus continent collision and on the ocean versus continent collision that you see here on the screen. And this compression is going to be squeezing the continent and causing the uplifted mountains that you see on the on both sides. And also, is going to be causing this, those stress faults to happen at the edges of the continent where it's colliding with other things and remember the truss faults end up piling the, the brittle pieces of the surface on top of each other which actually ends up making the continent thicker and for both reasons both the uplift or the folding of the mountains and because of the thrusting of pieces of rock on top of each other you end up making the continent thicker which in consequence creates a subsidence event underneath them and creates that deep piece of rock that extends underneath the continent as well now, interestingly enough, on the ocean versus continent collision, when you have that wet rock forming here on the bottom, you're going to have the wet periodotite on the mantle and the wet quartz-like material on the bottom of the continental crust. What's going to happen is that this crust is going to be melting, creating magma plumes, which are going to rise to form volcanoes. And these volcanoes will actually thicken the crust because as they erupt, more and more new crust is made. So both the volcano mountain itself and the lava that comes out of it end up be, be making new crust. So you have crust or thickening by volcano growth in addition to the folding that, that, that we described. You also have crust or thickening by the adding of hot flow into the lower crust. So that means the, the magma that is actually rising from the melting oceanic plate and that's actually melting that wet rock because of the water that's coming with the oceanic plate will actually be added to the bottom and so you have thickening happening on the bottom as well because of the magma that's being added to the continent. Meanwhile, sediments are going to be gathered in the, beneath the truss faults that happen at the edges of the continents. Both sediments that are coming added from the oceanic crust, so that means the sediments that were gathered in the oceans will actually be added over here, and the sediments will also be added on the other side by deposition, by wind and waves and whatever it is that's depositing this material there, and or rain, and all of these things will actually be adding sediments on the, on the gaps that are created because of the truss faulting that's actually piled the rock on top of each other, and that's going to create even a heavier material than you already would have because of the truss faults piling on top of each other, this sedimentation will cause even more subsidence, so also making the thrust uh, thicker underneath it. And this will happen on either one of those collision types. Now, another thing that's actually interesting that happens differently on the continent versus continent collision, remember that because the, the crust is not going to be as wet, it's not going to be as flexible as the other one was, and so it's going to crust and break more than the other one did, and you're going to have less melting of the crust, so you're not going to have as strong as a magma plume, and therefore not as not really, you're not going to really get the volcano thickening. But the interesting thing that happens through this is that the densest materials from the bottom of the continental crust will actually detach themselves and subduct with the, to the mantle with the continental plate that is subducting. Meanwhile, the lighter materials will remain and be added to the continental crust by melt, melting and accretion at the, at the bottom. So you're still going to thicken the bottom of the crust, but you're going to thicken with the least dense of the materials because the most dense end up sinking underneath uh, with, with, with the subducting plate. So usually the most densest of the plates are going to be subducting. And that is why contents got thicker over time. Because of a combination of collision events causing them to fold, magma thickening both on the bottom and on the top if you have have a situation where the magma plume is hot enough to punch through and through truss faults which pile the continent on top of each other and through the addition of sediments which are actually going to cause subsidence which are going to thicken the continents in the side. Now when you put it all together you understand that th through the process of mountain building the continent is getting heavier. So just like a play-doh that you leave by itself after a while this play-doh will flatten out under the weight of, the, of itself and so these mountains are going to be trying to kind of flatten out 
uh, even as they are uplifted to the, to the surface. Now, as you thicken the continent, this process will continue more and more. And as the continent extends and collapses, as it becomes too thick, you actually cause even more trust faults, which actually thicken the region that wasn't uplifted before. So that means, imagine that you had a mountain here before, and this mountain kind of extended to the side, because just like the, the dough that you see here extending to the side. What ends up happening is that as the mountain collapses, it pushes the landscape that's on the side forward. And that's why you have a lot of trust faults near the edges of the mountains. Because even as the mountain is becoming uplifted, it's also going to be collapsing under its own weight, thrusting the, the edges of the mountain into the side. So it's almost like that Play-Doh that's falling to the side, it's thrusting underneath the, the whatever was already there, and it's only and you're gonna get a lot of these trust faults as well on the edges of the of the mountain ranges that formed around the continents, and that's why you have a lot of ridges near mountain ranges, which are st you get these small little synclines and anticlines, and a lot of these little trust faults, and then you have the large mountain ridge. It's almost like you have a doing a collision, you have a bunch of fractures and little folds, and then you have the big fold, and that's all happening because of the dynamics of mountain building and mountain collapsing happening at the same time. All right, so over time, then you will have a construction of these large mountain ranges. But I also want to point out something interesting. Sometimes the downfold does not follow the upfold. And you see how you, if you take a cross section of the United States of America and you see that obviously the area on the west side is going to be a lot thicker because of the collision with the Pacific Plate. And so you're going to have the Sierra Nevada, the Great Basin, and the Rocky Mountains forming all around the edge before you get to the Great Plains. And then you have the Appalachian Mountains, which are the eroded old mountains that formed when... when uh, Pangea form, and by now they're quite eroded. But you might notice interesting that although there are some deep roots underneath the Rocky Mountains, for example, all right, you see that that subsidence happen here because of the of of the Rocky Mountains which are there. You do not necessarily get as deep of a root as you would expect, and definitely not underneath Sierra Nevada like you would, or the Great Basin as you would expect it to happen. And what's happening there is that the lithospheric mantle is actually compressed by a, a stenosphere that's actually more intense than usual. And so that means that the mantle action underneath this area is very, very pronounced, which actually keeps the, the crust or the lithosphere from actually sinking as it should. So that means that the high activity of the magma underneath this, these mountains are actually creating an uplift zone that prevents the down route from actually taking place. Because remember, you're only going to have subsidence if, you, if the buoyancy force is constant. In other words, if the weight increases while the buoyancy force stays the same. But what we're talking about here is that the asthenosphere is unusually warm, and so it's more buoyant, and causes the, causing the lithosphere to be suspended higher in the mantle. All right, and that's actually some interesting thing that just puts variation to what we talked about. So over time, as the continents hit things like island arcs, because these island arcs are approaching the continents, you see that as the oceanic plate subducts, sometimes it will bring with it a volcanic mountain or an island arc or something that form in its in its surface. And as this hits the continent, it will kind of lock with the continent and not really fall. It will subduct underneath with the oceanic plate. And this will actually happen because this is basically unsubductible material. It's too, t it's too tough to go, go underneath. And so what ends up happening is that it's going to be pressed against the continent and form a new thrust fault as this material is thrusted against the accretionary edge of the continent. And then, little by little, the subduction zone will shift from ahead of the actual seamount to behind the seamount. And you see that happening here at the end. And so... That is how material is added to the continents. And also, sometimes, you have the opposite taking place. Sometimes, this, this, what's subducting is an oceanic plate that behind it carries with it a continental crust. And so, and this is actually hitting an island arc. This is what's happening, for example, in Japan. The Pacific is slowly going underneath the island arc of, of Japan, which is, a, which is basically another oceanic crust that was there. And the island arc formed because of the two oceanic plates hitting against each other, and the densest of the plates sunk underneath. But behind the Pacific, you have the North American plate. Eventually, the North American plate will collide with the island arc of Japan. And when that happens, they will kind of merge together. The sediments that used to belong to the oceans are going to be trapped in between, as you see here, and are going to be thrusted and folded 
and like we talked about, they're going to be slipping and forming these trust faults in between it. Meanwhile, the arc will collide with the continent and, and resist subduction. But the continent, of course, is not going to subduct because it's very, very less dense than the oceanic plate would. So what's actually going to happen is that that island arc is going to be accreted into the continent and form new trust faults with the oceanic sediments in between. And then you're going to get these, the subduction of the plate that was behind the island arc so you're going to have a shift in the subduction zone because of this in the actual opposite direction and you're going to have these high previously oceanic sediments trapped in between and that's how you end up with fossils of fish high in the mountains in the continents because of this process that's happening and that's how continents grow over time and as these things happen you're going to have the features of the Contents versus contents, ocean versus ocean, or ocean versus content collisions, which you should watch in another video that we did on the previous video uh, series. So review that if you don't remember it. All right. Now, and when continents collide with other continents, then over either because colliding with arcs or with other continents, and over a long period of time, what ends up happening actually is that what you call accretion, and these pieces will gather together and make thicker and thicker pieces of continent and of material as they collide, fold, thrust past each other, and pile on top of each other, more deposition takes place, and the continent becomes thicker and thicker, and subsides more and more, as more and more material is added to the same place. But it's never going to be denser than the cooling oceanic plates, which collide against it, bringing the material that's actually accreting with the continents over long periods of time. And that's how continents grow. And as continents grow, you have the formation of mountains. Now, mountains, of course, are folds in the surface of the earth that happen because of either isostatic adjustments like magma intensity increasing but usually they're happening along the lines of these collision events so that's why we get mountains with mountain ranges so here you see the mountain like the largest mountain in the world the Everest and that happens because of a large ginormous collision between two continents between the India plate and the Asiatic plate and so that's why you have these large, ginormous mountain ranges all over the world. We talked about in the previous chapter for every time that you have uh, collisions between two plates. So that's going to be very common. Now, our, our mountain system will be a connection of several of these mountain ranges all put in the same place. For example, when you put the Rocky Mountains, Sierra Nevada, the Great Basin, all of them in the same place. Or when you put, for example, the mountains of southern Europe, there are several mountain ranges like the Apennine Mountains, the Alp Mountains, the Carpathian Mountains, the Caucasus Mountains, all added together, you make a mountain system. All right, so you see how you have the Apennine Mountains and the Alp Mountains, and then Another mountain over here, the Balkan Mountains, all kind of together making a large system of mountains. So you have mountains, which are folds, mountain ranges, which are a series of folds because of the collisions between plates, and mountain systems, which is a series of mountain ranges all the same area. And then, here, for example, you see one of those famous mountains, like the Himalayas, and you see that like they actually fold as two ginormous plates collide, making two sub sub subsequent mountain ranges all in the same spot. And that's why you end up getting that. And you see Everest over here, largest mountain of the world. And right next to it, you see the second largest mountain in the world, all because of these folds. And like I told you before, you just don't fold the, the mountain range itself. You also have smaller folds around the edges of it. And you see how you have these ridges all around the, the large mountain range. And you're going to have lots of truss faults also around this area because of the collapsing mountains actually uh, folding downwards because of this. And here you see the idea of mountain belts. Mountain belts is a combination of mountain systems all put around the edge of a large colliding plate system. So, for example, the Pacific plates, which are all colliding with other plates and being forced upwards, are formed large Pacific mountains. And along the Eurasian and Malaysian mountain belt, which are formed because the African, Australian, and Indian plates are all moving against the Asiatic plates. Also, the Arabian plate is pushing against here, too. So, and this here, because the North American plate, the South American plate, and the Asian plate uh, are all pushing against the Pacific plate, which are actually going to create this secondary uh, Pacific mountain belt. So, mountain belts are when large mountains of uh, systems all get together to form a large mountain complex around the world. It's interesting, though, that around the Pacific mountain belt, you actually get a lot of those arcs, including the islands of the Earth. Pacific, including the Siberian Islands and the Illusion Islands in um, Alaska, and you also have New Zealand and other things like that. All right? 
Now, in our last video, we're just going to review some different types of mountains that exist because of these folding tanks that happen on the Earth, and we'll conclude our deformation of the crust lecture. See you then.